start with our Andrew Dimber, who's monitoring protests in downtown Portland right now. These protests have been popping up since police shot and killed Quanes Hayes, a teenager. And this time, Andrew, one of those protests shut down traffic. How's it look now? Yeah, well, Jennifer Dan, I can tell you that the protesters have been spread pretty thin, but now they've made their way from the Portland building to the Justice Center, now outside of Central Precinct. Now, we do know there have been at least two arrests, but since we reported those two arrests, we saw one other man get taken into police custody, this for what looked to be him dropping off a bag, a large bag outside of the federal building. Police responded in riot gear and in numbers, and we saw them take away that man. Since then, police have given the protesters their space. They've been marching around in circles uh, around the Justice Center and around Central Precinct. We also know that there are some riot police set up near the Hawthorne Bridge, but the protesters have expressed that they don't plan to uh, take the bridge, and right now they're making their way back to to the Justice Center. If you take a look at some of the protesters that are left over, they are pretty young. Uh, teenagers, early 20s. We saw a girl as young as 10 years old in this crowd. They're continuing their demonstration. They blocked traffic a couple of hours ago, uh, laying in the street, blocking TriMet trains and traffic, and that's what led to some of those arrests. Uh, but so far, we can only confirm that there have been two arrests, although we did see one other man get taken into police custody. We're going to continue to follow the story. As soon as we have any more developments, we'll be sure to check back in. For now, we're live outside of Central Precinct. Andrew Dimberg for Coin6 News. We'll of course, switch back to Andrew if need be. These protesters have also been disrupting city council meetings for weeks, and Mayor Ted Wheeler has said he would come up with a solution. Our Tim Becker was the only TV reporter inside the council meeting. He's live in the newsroom right now with more. Well, the mayor did say he'd work up a plan, and he indeed had one. The building was locked down around 1.30, and there was a strong police presence both inside and outside of the Portland building. They made sure that chaos did not even make it inside of the building today. Now, as you have just seen outside, there was a group of about 50 protesters that wanted to get in there and cause some trouble in city council, but security guards able to keep the place locked down nicely. It was just two weeks ago that uh, a new ordinance was approved allowing city leaders to throw out disruptive protesters from meetings and it's about more than just interrupting city business anymore it is about a safe workplace this week commissioner nick fish had a staffer quit saying the stress of the protest triggered ptsd that he has had for decades and just last week the commissioner told his entire staff to stay away from those meetings if people want to say cutting and hurtful things to me they can do it directly to me I draw the line with the people who work for the city. Uh, the professionals who work for the city deserve a safe workplace. And I heard things last Wednesday I've never heard during my entire public service. The problem reached a peak last week when protesters signed up to testify and use the platform to verbally attack and belittle and swear at Mayor Ted Wheeler, who rather than react uh, then with uh, ejection and getting them out of there, chose to rather to listen uh, and then thank them off for their testimony. It has not indeed been an easy start for Ted Wheeler in office. Commissioner Nick Fish telling me he has served with four mayors now and none has had a more challenging first three months in office than Ted Wheeler. Back to you. Uh, it's been a very, very tough going on lots of uh, issues. Mm. All right.